Onomakara are the most colorful freshwater fish. They're so popular amongst aquarists because of their flamboyant colors and their peaceful behavior. Hi, I'm Michelle from Quebec Cyclidé, your local fish store in Terrebonne, Quebec, right outside of Montreal. Today, we are talking about the Olonokara group of Lake Malawi. What is an Olonokara? Well, the term is used both as a group of cichlids, that means many genus together, and as a genus. There is actually a genus called Oronokara. In the group though, there are only three genus, which is, well, as you guessed it, Oronokara, Letrinops is the second, and Tremitsichromis the third. These cichlids have been grouped together based on their DNA and their physical characteristics. The common name for this fish in the hobby comes from its flamboyant colors and its habit of showing them off. It is called the peacock. Usually though, when we talk about peacocks, we're only talking about the genus and not the group. So how to recognize these fish? Well, first of all, the male's colors are amazing. And the female's colors, well, let's just say they're 50 shades of a color between white and black. It's a lot easier to recognize an Olonokara than an Embuna because their shape is similar within the genus and the group. Fun fact from the Olonokara, the word took its roots from the Greek language. Olo means flute and kara means face. So that raises a lot of questions about what a flute looks like and helps us not at all to identify this fish. As all African cichlids, they have a complex social behavior. Within the same group, you will have a hierarchy between the fish. So the, the dominant male will always be more flamboyant than the others. With age though, all the males, in my experience, have been known, if they're high quality enough, to color up. Even in my breeding colonies, I have noticed with age that all my males end up coloring to their full potential but the dominant ones will always show off more, their fins will always be bigger than the others. But the, the dominated ones will be gorgeous as well. As for aggressivity, well, compared to the other tropical fish of America, Asia, and all that, yes, they are aggressive, and it is to be taken into consideration. African cichlids are never compatible with other fish. Few exceptions apply, obviously. Compared to other African cichlids, the Olonokara are a peaceful group. They will, though, be able to defend themselves if ever they're attacked. They're peaceful, they're not pushovers. So I'm going to list three kinds of tanks that you can put Olonokara in with which they are compatible. The first tank is a breeding tank. If your goal is to breed these cichlids, well, you're best off keeping them in a species-only tank to avoid hybrids. Keep a ratio of one male for two to three females and always keep them in groups of five or more to reduce aggressivity. This fish in the wild is not aggressive and is pretty nomadic. In the aquarium though, you're restricting this fish to an a lot smaller volume than it's used to in the wild. So you have to take precautions to avoid aggressivity. In my breeding facility, I have, I usually keep my, my cichlids in a ratio of one to two males for a whole harem of females. In my uh, yellow regal aquarium, the Olonoscara SP Stuart Grand C Maleri, you'll notice I have one male for multiple females. If you have a starbuck, a fish that will breed and breed and breed and breed, whether you have one male or two, it will not change anything. He will breed regardless. In my lemon jake tank, I actually only wanted to keep two males for the five females I had. But before I was able to assess, I wanted to take out the most dominated one and put him in another tank so he can gather his strength, gather his confidence, and then be able to sell him. Before I was able to do that, they started breeding, meaning that this is now a breeding colony. If I take a male out now, it might just disrupt the whole social construct that they developed for themselves. So for now, I'll leave the three males in there. 
this is one of the least impressive tanks. If your goal is just to breed any African cichlid, check out my video about Mbunas. Maybe that one will impress you more, because the males and the females can often be very colorful. Next up is the Olonokara show tank. This is where you will only put males of the Olonokara group or genus in the same aquarium. When you create this aquarium, the males are a lot calmer than they would be in a breeding tank. Since the hierarchy that will develop in this tank is a lot less intense than in the breeding aquarium, well, all the males will end up with flamboyant colors. In this aquarium, every fish you pick is a piece of art. You will shop around, you will look for that perfect fish, that species. Let's say you want an Elwanda, you will look for it, get in on waiting lists just to get that one fish and it will be worth it. The third kind of aquarium is the Malawi show tank. So in the Malawi show tank, you will mix Olonokara, Haps, which are another group from Lake Malawi, and certain species of Mbunas. One of the limitations of this aquarium is the size. So technically, Olonokara and Haps are very compatible together. But some of these Haps will get very big. So some, in some cases, if you have a fish in a 75 gallon tank, he might not be compatible. For instance, the Dimidio Kramis Concrecisets. This fish can grow up to 12 inches. You don't want him in your 75 gallon tank. He will wreak havoc. You can also mix certain omnivorous embunas with your Olonokara. The best example is the Labidu Kramis Caerelius the yellow lap. This fish is technically more aggressive than the Olonokara, but less aggressive than most Mbunas. In Lake Malawi, Olonokara are open water swimmers. They don't live in schools and are not territorial. They will live on the sandy beaches and around the big boulders. Most of these sandy slash rocky habitats between 5 meters and 40 meters in Lake Malawi are inhabited by Oronokaras. Of course, I'd say these are not territorial, but there are still some exceptions. One of the species of the Oronokara genus, the Oronokara Jacob Rebergi, the, as you saw at my lemon jakes or the otter point as well, these are a more aggressive cichlids and they have been seen to defend a cave or territory. In the aquarium, you technically don't need a lot of decorations to keep Olonokara. A couple big coral rocks will do. If you have a Jacob cichlid, a uh, Jacob Rebergi, make sure to add a couple caves that some of those rocks have little holes in them that they can dig under and make a cave. If ever you find that your fish are aggressive in the aquarium, just add more decorations. Plants are not necessary in the Olonokara aquarium. If ever, for aesthetic reasons, you want to add some, by all means, please do. They, will, they won't change anything for the fish. If you have a breeding tank, actually those, the little babies, when the mother spits them out in the aquarium, they'll hide in the plants, so it'll protect those little ones. But for the show tanks, just go for it if you like it. So for substrate, get a pH augmenting sandy substrate. It doesn't have to be very fine, but they have to be able to sift it through their gills because in the wild, that's how they eat. It will also remake your aquascape. So if ever you want a little mound of substrate in one place, forget about it. They will remake it to their liking. I've actually once seen them work together as a team with other haps to take all this sand from one side of the aquarium and bring it to the other. The, other, the first side was just on the glass in the end. It was an incredible feat even though my aquarium looked ridiculous and it was the demo at the entrance of the store. Because they like to redo the aquascape so much, make sure you give them a, at least two inches of substrate. The minimum tank size for Olonokara is 55 gallons. In this aquarium, you can have 10 to 12 fish in it. Personally, I prefer 75 gallons enough for Olonokara. I find that in a 55 gallon, because it's so thin, the fish, they, they seem stuck. The bigger, the better for the aquarium. If you have a five or six foot tank, you're gonna see your fish go from one end to the other. They're gonna be swimming all day long. It's a lot of fun. Olonokara, like all other cichlids from Lake Malawi, are mouth brooders. 
This means the female will hold the fish in her mouth for up to four weeks before spitting them out. When the female is holding, you don't necessarily have to isolate her. You can just let her go in the aquarium. This is better for her because for the four weeks, she is just swimming around. If you just let her go in the aquarium, she'll spit out her, her babies and you will have a few survivors. Just like in my Alwanda tank that you can see here. I mean, it is my bread and butter, but sometimes I might miss a batch or two. Nobody's perfect. Keep in mind that African cichlids will breed every few months for the rest of their life. If ever you miss a batch, don't feel bad about it. You'll get another one. Oromokara take a year and a half to two years to reach their full mature size. When they reach about one inch, you'll start seeing maybe a male or two start to color up, but it's no indication of the ratio that there is in your aquarium. It's really when they get a lot older and over time that they will all end up coloring up. So it's very hard when they're juveniles to be able to sex them accurately. Because of the time it takes to grow them and the possibility of getting a female in the end, if you're looking for a show tank, you're best off buying already adult colorful male cichlids. These can be found on the market. Also, it, it's happened to me sometimes in my growing facility, I'd see one inch fish in the batch of 50 and I'd see it all colorful. So I'd, I'd bring it in front in, in the store. I figure, oh, maybe he'll keep his colors. They never do. I just end up putting him back in the back because he loses his colors automatically as soon as he's with bigger fish because, well, suddenly he's not the big fish in the aquarium. He's two inches. Another important subject that we have to talk about when we're breeding fish and that we hate talking about, but we're gonna do it anyways, is hybrids. To get Oronokara hybrids is very easy if you're not careful, so be careful. I always suggest to use species-only tanks. Technically, putting different species of Oronokara together, like a Stuart Granty, a Jacob Frébergui, a Letrinas, they should not breed together if you have multiple specimens of each, each fish. But remember what color I told you the females were? It's hard to tell them apart. So even if you get some breeding of these fish, you're not gonna be able to, to know what female is holding and if she's holding from the right male. Because the females look alike, it takes one and a half to two years to start seeing color in a group. If you're growing cichlids, chances are you're not like me. You don't have hundreds of aquariums. You can't just put one species per tank. So you have many species in the same aquarium. You won't know until one or to two years later that you have hybrids. Another way to avoid hybrids is to, and this sounds very obvious, not to buy hybrids. Certain sources are less reputable than others and have difficulty identifying the fish. If you're just buying yellow peacock, well, there are two or three kinds of yellow peacocks on the market available. If the store is not able to properly identify the male, how good do you think they were at identifying the females? Just buy from reputable sources, from stores that you can trust. Another mix that is frowned upon is within the same species, so it's not a hybrid, but it's still a mix of origins. For example, the Oronokara Stuart Granty is found throughout Lake Malawi. And each place that you find this fish, it has a different color. And it's, I'm not saying from bright yellow to dark yellow, I'm saying they picked out their colors out of the rainbow. So if we mix different origins, the co colors of the babies will be distorted and you will lose the quality of the origin. As aquarists, it's our responsibility to protect the diversity and complexity of nature as, when we're creating our mini ecosystem. Another mix of peacocks, and I'm gonna talk about this, is, is the lab-made hybrid. The two popular species on the market are the Oronokara firefish and the Oronokara OB. These were created in a lab and are not line-bred cichlids. These are different species mixed together to give a fish that looks like the Oronokara. It has the same shape of the genus Oronokara, but it has colors that are not available in the wild. Some purists, as they call them, would categorically refuse to integrate these fish. Personally, I sell them, I breed them, and I'm not ashamed of it. It's a pretty pink fish and it's very popular among the kids. I mean, what little girl doesn't love her little pink fish, right? If you want to only have the 
purity of Lake Malawi, you don't have to add these in. As for me, well, you pick your battles, right? When you'll be shopping for your Oronokara, you will find that there are many different qualities on the market. Certain stores will import from Asia, where you will find two-inch fish that are fully colored. They will have like a hundred beautiful two-inch colored males. Seriously? Within weeks, these fish will lose their colors. What happens is that they add hormones to the aquarium where they're growing these fish. So these male hormones will stimulate the colors, will stimulate the fin growth also. You'll notice the two inch fish has a long fin. That's, that's just not natural. So let me ask you this. When your fish breed, do, are the babies all males all the time? No, you have two inch females too in that batch. They have been given male hormones, so they will take on male traits, such as the color and the elongated fins. But as with the males, with time, they will lose all these colors. They will keep the fins though, those don't go away. Using hormones when you're growing fish to stimulate such growth and such a development will affect their longevity and just general health. The best way to buy high quality cichlids is the same as the best way to not buy hybrids is to buy from reputable sources. A good rule of thumb, it's two inches fully colored, the store only had them for a week, it's probably on hormones. In the wild, Olonokara feed in the substrate. So they will stay stationary and wait for the inverts to move. They have sensitive sensorial pores and they will feel the movement. Once they, once they feel that with their quick reflexes, they'll grab it. In the aquarium, let's face it, there's a lot less inverts in your substrate than in the lakes. Feed your Oronokata omnivorous high quality pellets in the morning and omnivorous high quality flakes in the evening. When you're shopping for fish food, we'll make sure that it's marine protein and not mammal protein. And also make sure that there's kelp or spirulina in the recipe. If you want to give your fish a treat in the morning, instead of feeding pellets, once a week you can give them some krill, mysis or brine shrimp that are frozen. Now you're ready to pick your fish. If you have questions on how to start an aquarium or about water parameters and all that stuff, go check out my other videos. There's a lot of information there. So that's it for today. If you like this video, leave me a thumbs up or a comment. I love reading those. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and I have a great website packed with information. Subscribe to my channel. There are plenty more adventure information and fish videos coming up. You do not want to miss out. So I'll be seeing you next week. Bye-bye.